Hello world, and welcome back to the Dependency Injection series. This is episode number two, and we are going to give an overview of one of the most important terms and concepts of DI, the composition root. In the first episode, we saw what dependency injection is, we explained that it's a simple to understand, yet tough to implement concept, and we even saw the three ways to perform it for a class. We ended the episode with some questions that proved DI is far more complex than simply passing dependencies to a class. But what's the grand objective of dependency injection? Its grand objective is to separate your application into two parts. The functional part, where your logic is put, and then the compositional part, the part will, where all of your beautiful classes that you wrote will get instantiated and wired together. Then, those two separate and independent parts will need to have a way of communicating with each other. This is dependency injection at the highest level, a separation of concerns. The place in your application where you will compose objects is usually called the composition root. We will see in a bit why this name makes sense. For now, composition root should be located in the main function of your application the entry point. This varies depending on what language or which framework you are using. Remember the main function from which all your programs used to start? Well, this is the perfect candidate to host the composition root. Nothing outside this component depends on anything inside it. All the dependencies point outward. This is where you put the creation of your objects using factories, switches, constructors, it's the dirtiest of them all. Why dirty? Dirty in the sense of having the most concrete definitions of everything. When your functional set uses an abstraction, making it flexible, the composition root has created the concrete implementation for that abstraction. It's dirty in the sense of being very specific rather than generic. Every time we rely on an abstraction, then we delegate the concrete creation of the object to someone else. And if we keep doing that, will eventually bump into the composition root. This module has no options of being generic anymore. It cannot go back to someone else and say, I need a concrete implementation of something. There is no one else. This is why it resides in the entry point of your application. Let's look at this schematically. We have the composition root. It knows how to create, then how to wire components. Then the rest of your application talks to the composition root to gain access to the goods that it created. This is why it's called the composition root. It is the root of the tree of your dependencies. The relationships of our objects in our application is called an object graph. And the role of any DI framework is to be in charge of it all and abstract those complex relationships from us. We only talk to the composition root and it's responsible of giving us the constructed and wired together be behaviors as needed. So what did we achieve by delegating construction to a single place of our application? Well, apart from the obvious advantages of having a single control panel for application through which we can tweak its behavior, let's go back to our solid principles and specifically the single responsibility principle whose video I will have linked down below the like button. So in the single responsibility principle, we said that each class should have only one reason to change. And therefore we broke them down into multiple smaller classes to isolate behaviors. Our application becomes more maintainable and less error prone. However, there is an added overhead to wire all those objects together. I mean, where we used to have only one class, after following the SRP, we could end up with three, four, or even more classes. Our object graph gets exponentially more complex. So every time you need to use this behavior, you will need to assemble those parts yourself. With dependency injection set in place, you will no longer need to do it everywhere yourself. You will implement it once in your composition root and then inject it everywhere you need to. And your functional set will simply use the final product of that creation. Isn't that great? Therefore, DI allows us to keep separating concerns without the added overhead of the assembly. Let me give you an analogy that I often use in that context 
whenever I am teaching dependency injection. You need to tidy your wardrobe. It would be great to split every piece of clothing in a different shelf. But think about the overhead every time you would need to get dressed. You would need to open, say, 15 shelves, take out your clothes, and then get dressed. Does it sound tiring? Well, now picture the same scenario, but instead of you needing to do all that, you have a magic button to say, I need my casual outfit number 31. And then the proper shelves open magically and have also assembled your clothes in the proper order for you to wear. This is dependency injection for an application where instead of pieces of clothes, we have parts of functionality, classes. In the next part, we are ready to answer the question of the first episode. Which classes should we create and inject in the composition root? And which should we create inside the clients that use them? And why? Then we will be set in place to implement DI on a sample Android app to see dependency injection in action using a technique called pure dependency injection. It's a type that uses no frameworks. Thank you very much for watching and do not hesitate to contact me about questions or comments at my links in the description. See you on the next episode.